Hey everybody, welcome back to Arsenal Pass. Today we have a very special episode for you. We're going to be joined by T. T is bringing his old hymn deck, which I am very excited excited about, especially in the context of some recent bannings. We've got a big shakeup in the Blitz format. On top of that, we also have Everfest releasing. So there's a lot happening in the Blitz format right now. T, tell me what you've enjoyed about Blitz and why you've been drawn to this old hymn deck. Uh, I really enjoy Blitz because of like the 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 meta in it feels different. Things are playable that aren't really playable in Classic Constructed and more competitive. So uh, you get a lot of like ninjas running around, which is my favorite class. So being able to see a bunch of people playing a bunch of cool ninja cards, is sweet. Uh, but I want to beat those ninja cards. So I put together Old Him with the main strategy of not allowing other people to play the game. There is a finite amount of fun to be had in a game of flesh and blood, and I want to have all of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, this is the world of Blitz, so equipment is the first on the menu. Can you talk me through what you've got for us here? Sure. So for our equipment loadout, we have Crater Fist, Crown of Seeds, Heart of Ice, Iron Hide Legs, a set of Null Rune, counting the Heart of Ice, and Rampart and Tech Plating with weapons of Sledge and Winter's Whale. Each of these pieces play an important part in their matchups that you play them. Uh, obviously, the Null Rune is more geared towards like a full loadout for Kano, which is, in my opinion, one of the matchups that can be the hardest with this deck. But you play enough blues that you can get through that. Other than that, your equipment is just about blocking damage in different ways. Uh, Crater Fist to get through some of the damage with being mana efficient along with... Or uh, Crown of Seeds, sorry, not Crater Fist. Uh, Crater Fist and Tech Plating just do really efficient blocks. Uh, Crown of Seeds can block damage while being mana efficient. So if you're using things like Iron Hide Legs or Rampart of the Ram's Head, you get to make use of that extra mana if you aren't using it to block something like Arcane. Uh, and Crown of Seeds, of course, can just block Arcane on its own too. Uh, Rampart of the Ram's Head, very good. Ever since that card came out, I've really been enjoying it. It just blocks damage efficiently and gets to keep going every time they break the chain. Sledge of Anvilheim, very good in those matchups where you want to be attacking and keeping mana floating. Most importantly, in Kano, I've enjoyed it because you can get in an attack with two cards uh, and still have mana floating if they come back at you with something on your turn. Mm -hmm. yep. you, you mentioned it at the top, but talk to me about what this deck is trying to do and ultimately, how are you winning the game? Sure. So this deck has a couple different strategies of how it wins the game. And it's kind of matchup dependent on what you're going to do. But for the most part, what you're going to do is just block with three cards, keep a blue ice in hand, and then smack down with Winter's Whale if you're playing that in that matchup so that you can apply pressure, give them Frostbites to disrupt their plan, and then still have typically nine damage to or nine defensive cards to block with whenever it goes back to them. So you get to be really efficient. And then in matchups where you can, like where you keep extra cards, you can arsenal a big threat and come back with it later. Something like uh, Command and Conquer, Oak and Old, cards that have high impact, low cost. Yeah, I have, I have a question to actually take because I've you know been testing for for nationals and playing some Classic Constructed and, and played a bit of old time. And one of the like really common play patterns I've found in Classic Constructed is is really using that Crown of Seeds, right? Like really cycling that arsenal, and and then um, you can you know set up deck for late game where you can get back to cards that you really want. I feel like the more you draw Pulse of Eyes and Loft, the better it seems to be for you. Is it similar in Blitz? Are you really trying to use that crown to, to get through the deck and, and have those five-card hands on defense? Yeah, in matchups where you have that Crown of Seeds, you just get extra cards to defend, obviously, and prevent more damage. You get to use that extra mana with your Iron Hides and your Rampart, so it's just super mana efficient, blocks Arcane efficiently, uh, and then you can cycle yourself into setting up a bunch of ice cards and channel lake frigids so that in the late game, you just have this lockdown where you get to keep smashing them every turn. Yeah, right. And you're doing that quite a bit against like ninjas and things like that, right? The... Yeah. Yep. You have to you have to be mana efficient when you're blocking against Ira because they come in with one, then two, and then usually five. So you just you have to make sure that you're spreading out your uh, your block evenly so that you can take advantage of all the cards and still be able to come back with a threat at them. Otherwise you can lose that matchup pretty easily. 100%. Can you talk me through some key cards and key combination of cards, you know, potentially things that you try to play towards um, to have your pivot turns or have your, ex the turns where you are pressuring the opponent? Sure. Uh, it's really important to get something like a uh, Oaken old or a command and conquer an endless winter. One of your cheap, efficient threats in the arsenal so that you can keep that up for a turn where you have a pivot and then be able to use it. Endless Winter is very good against decks that defend a lot 
and then come back with something like Ira because you get to attack them. They block with multiple cards and then might not have the mana to come back with their full combo. So you just have this nice pivot. Oakenold, if you can set it up where you confuse it, uh, you just get to tear apart their strategy and continue doing your own thing. So typically you're going to get like three cards plus some armor there. Command and Conquer is relevant in certain matchups where you know they're going to be taking the most advantage of their arsenal. Uh, and then all of your attacks in your deck also block Prism really well. Obviously it pops Phantasm so you can stop their strategies. You, Like I said earlier, you really want to focus on getting Channel Lake along with a bunch of ice cards towards the bottom of your deck in most matchups. So you can block out and hammer through the early game, set up this Channel Lake Frigid and be like, all right, my turn. Turn the wheel around and start smashing them with seven attacks and plus. Yeah. And awesome. do you find you to do that in sort of the decks, against the decks that are... Uh, you know, they, they could gas out as well. Like, you, they run through their gas earlier. You're trying to stop their, their gas, get through their red cards, and then maybe you get back to the second cycle of your deck. You've got gas because you've been, you know, crown of seedings, you know, red cards to the bottom or tucking cards, and then all of a sudden they've got two or three blue cards in their hand. And you, is that kind of the time where you're able to sort of turn the, turn the wheel, as you say, turn the screw? Yeah. So as much as you can, you want to save your equipment that blocks until later in the game so that you can use that to block out damage and then just use your whole hand to be smashing them down with like an attack plus a pummel or whatever it ends up being to just take advantage of that late game. Get through the early game, get to the late game, apply a little bit of pressure through the early game to make sure that you're slowing them down with frostbites and still applying some pressure because you're going to take a card out of their hand usually and get a damage through and have a frostbite or you're going to take like a card plus an equipment. And the less equipment they have, the better your dominate attacks are and the better you can force them into not overblocking and taking advantage of things like Pummel. Yeah. Awesome. How, what do you feel this deck thrives um, thrives against, right? So obviously Blitz is due for a change uh, with the bands like we talked about and uh, tons of additions in Everfest. But, you know, we a lot of us are, <laughs> you know, the memory of Ira isn't too far. So are you preying on that type of deck specifically? I think this deck does really well against decks that have a, a set game plan. Like if you're if you're playing against something like Ira where they just want to defend a lot and then come back in with a, with a tempo threat or like Ira doesn't usually set up a bunch of combos in the same way that Katsu does. Ira just plays like this control game plan and tries to poke back through damage and you get to you get to poke a lot of holes in that kind of strategy. Uh, also with things like Dorinthia where they have just like this plan of hit you with sword you get to take a lot of vanilla sword swings because it's not as much damage as you're going to apply back to them and you just get to dedicate a lot of your hand to blocking until you can find this nice setup pivot like uh similar to what bravo would do in in cc where you just want to arsenal a big threat and once you get to the point smack it down and send out the game Mm -hmm. yeah. What kind of advice would you give to a new player picking up this deck? What do you think of some pitfalls, you know, where people could maybe get the wrong idea? Um, I think an example of this would be maybe we're trying to play the deck a bit too aggressively, right? You know, you talked about this long controlly game plan. What are some pointers you would give to somebody that um, just picks up this deck? One of the one of the big things is even though this is a long controlly game plan, you have to be careful not to overuse Oldham's ability which is kind of strange because it's literally the ability printed on the card. It seems like the reason you would play the card, but you're really just playing it for the combination of the cards you get to play. Um, you're not necessarily playing Oldham because of Oldham's ability. And so one thing that I have seen a lot of people do is overuse this ability in Blitz uh, versus in Limited and CC. I see a lot of people not use the ability enough. So this is different in Blitz uh, because you don't want to use the ability as much. The only time you're really going to use it is whenever you find an opportunity to cut them off of another attack with an ice card uh, instead of having to block more or pitch more. So you get to use the ice card to, sh to stop their string of attacks. Um, but this deck doesn't play a lot of earth cards, so you're typically not going to be using your earth pitch. I like, I like that you play the yellow autumn's touches, though, so that you can double fuse on certain hands. You have that ability, which is... Is really cool and i think one of the, the early pitfalls of Ultim was like play a lot of earth cards play a lot of ice cards and kind of do neither well and um i like that you know you've kind of fit this in a little bit tighter in terms of the package that you have here and it feels like it's uh, it's a bit easier to manage those um i had i had a question i want to know because i'm sure people want to know what is the best card in this deck what is like 
what is the linchpin of of this deck is is there one or is it just the the, the pure kind of combination of those ice cards and the threats and uh, I think the best card hands down is Terra Sunder. It's just a blue non-attack that blocks for three if you have to. And then other than that, it assembles a threat even if you don't have one because you can just load it up on your weapon. And now you're threatening two cards from their hand, damage, and a frostbite to stop anything that they would have done. So like if you can Terra Sunder a Winter's Whale off of an ice pitch, you're riding high. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. All right, T, I want to ask you, does this deck get better in the context of the recent Dustblade ban, um, as well as the other cards in cool. the Arata? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, like, one big thing about Dustblade is it could get out of hand if you weren't able to close the game fast enough. So in that matchup before, you had to find a lot of threats while also being able to block all the damage they were coming at you with. So now you just get to, like... Rosetta Thorn is nothing close to Dustblade mm -hmm. because you can just pitch a blue and block two arcane plus use the shield on it. Uh, and then you're just taking one. But you also play Heart of Findle in the matchup, or in the deck in general, so if you get to a point where you're lower, you just block a whole Rosetta Thorn with a Heart of Findle pitch. Um, but without Duskblade, you just get to maintain the same level of pressure from your opponent and keep doing the same thing until you can find that endgame setup. Yeah. Uh, and then with, with the bands, uh, that puts less aggro in the meta which is a little awkward because oldham thrives on that but it also puts you in this control meta where oldham is very good into other control decks because he blocks so efficiently with things that aren't cards from hand so even if you're playing against things that are like dominate style control or on hit style control you just get to block that all up really well and you have pummel plus command and conquer and you get to you can you yeah. can tuck those cards with your crown of seeds you know you can you can keep those cards for late game so you you have this ability to do some really cool things which is which is awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I would, I would, uh, I would take this to a skirmish if there was one next weekend after the bans. That's for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> looks, to be, looks to be a potential powerhouse in Everfest. I'm sure it's going to get a, you know some goodies in that set as well to add in. T was kind enough to write a deck guide to expand on this video for us on our Patreon. If you want to check that out, um, it's going to go into matchups, certain card choices, as well as you know play patterns and what you should be doing in the game. But anyway, pick up the stack. Let us know what you think. Take it to your local army and just dunk on all those non-dustbladed, <laughs> non-dustbladed rune blades and those iras, of course. Oh yeah. But again, I, T, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for sharing this deck. And yeah, I'm excited for I'm excited for what Blitz, ha what Blitz has to offer us in the, in the future here. So until next time, see you on the next video. See ya.